The first one is consecrate yourself to be a watchman. There's something about a watchman that's precious to the Lord. You see, a watchman sees and a watchman guards. You see, it's one thing to pray. It's another thing to be a watchman. Many people pray only for their own breakthroughs, yet watchmen wait on the Lord to receive the burden of the Lord. And it's something the Lord has been teaching me. And I believe that God is taking us to a place where, yes, we pray. We pray through lists that we've decided we need to pray about this. We need to pray about that. But there's a place in God where we empty ourselves and we say, God, give me your burden. Lord, I lay down my burdens so that I can carry your burdens. And I believe that there's something about giving yourself to God to be a watchman, a watcher, someone who sees what's on God's agenda and God's. And I believe that when we do that, we are precious to God with regards to him being able to use us. You see, there's being precious to God in terms of, oh, I love you. And he loves us and he delights in us. But there's also precious for his use. You see, a watchman is very precious to the Lord. There's sacrifice involved in making yourself available to stand in the gap and to be a guardian. Some of you are in a season where the Lord is stirring you to widen your jurisdiction when it comes to prayer. Prayer beyond yourself and your family, right? Where you're no longer saying it's us for and no more. Maybe you've been in a place where you've just been uh, standing in the gap on behalf of your company. And now God is saying, I want you to be a watchman for your industry. Maybe you've been in a place where you've just been praying for your kids' school and the things that affect your kids. And God is saying, I want you to be a watchman over the education in this nation. I don't know what it is, but I believe that God is taking us as a church, taking us as a people to a place where he's expanding our jurisdiction in terms of what we are covering as watchmen. You see, a watchman gets heaven's attention because God can rely on him or her. God doesn't do anything in the earth without working through watchmen and intercessors. You see, therefore, when God establishes things, he first reveals it to these watchmen so that they can pray for a manifestation of it in the earthly realm. And that's how God has chosen to work. He works through us. He's chosen to do that. He could have done it all by himself, but he says, no, we're going to co-labor in this. So I'm going to reveal it to you. You receive it from heaven and birth it in the earth. But you see, the starting point is that we see what's going on in heaven and then we receive it and then we inject it into the earth. This is so important. Sometimes we've got this mindset of, hey, there's God doing his stuff. Oh, look, God is doing his stuff. But I believe the way God works is he reveals it to us first and he says, now birth it, now birth it. And we co-create things in the earth with him. That's what co-laboring is about. And there's laboring in the spirit that the Lord is calling us to. In Amos 3 verse 7, it says, surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets. Isn't that powerful? Surely the sovereign Lord, okay? It's amazing. We're talking about his sovereignty, but look at this. Surely the sovereign Lord, the sovereign Lord who can do whatever he wants to do. It says he does nothing. In other words, he's chosen this. He does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets. Now, what is the definition of plan? plan to plan is to prepare the details beforehand. So God reveals the details of what he wants to do to his servants, the prophets. Let me just say this, there are levels of seeing, there are levels of seeing. You see, some prophets were called seers because their eyes were opened by the Lord and they would see. Now, many people today are praying, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, but they have not seen or experienced kingdom realities. We need to first see the heavenly blueprint in order to pray it into the earth. This is so crucial. We need to study the ingredients of the kingdom, such as righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible says. And we study that. We need to be aware of the processes of the kingdom. And all of this starts with us seeing. It starts with us seeing. Heaven is attracted to those that have consecrated themselves to be watchmen because they position themselves to see. Many people love seeing. Oh, Lord, give me this vision. Lord, give me that vision. But they haven't proven themselves faithful to then pray through what God shows them. In John 5, 19 to 20, Jesus gave them this answer. Very truly, I tell you, the Son of Man can do nothing by himself. 
He can do only what he sees the Father doing. So every action that Jesus did stemmed from him seeing what the Father was doing. And I believe we're called to do the same. He went on to say, because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. But how does he get to do it? For the Father loves the Son and shows him all he does. The Son can only do it because he's seeing what the Father does. Yes, and he will show him even greater works than these so that you'll be amazed. So all the great works the Son did, he was seeing the Father doing it and he did what he saw the Father doing. It begins with seeing. The other aspect of being a watchman is hearing. So we have to see and we have to hear. We shut down other voices and we live by his voice. We literally hang on to his words. In Matthew 4 verse 4, Jesus answered, it is written. And this was when the the devil was trying to tempt him. It is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. That's the preceding word. We live by this word. So what is the key about being a watchman who sees and hears? Okay. It's so key. It's so key. You present yourself to God, you consecrate yourself to the Lord, and you say, Lord, I want to see. Lord, I want to hear, and I want to be faithful with what I see and hear. And that's why Paul the Apostle talks about being stewards of the mysteries. They're not our mysteries, they're God's mysteries, and we have to be stewards of the mysteries where we pass them on and activate them in the earth. So what is key about being a watchman who sees and hears is that it gives you the opportunity to make prophetic decrees and declarations. You see, this is one of the dimensions that activates angelic beings. One of the purposes of angels is to respond to the bidding of the Lord's word. We're not the ones who instruct the angels, right? But we decree and we make prophetic decrees based on what we're seeing in heaven. And then as we do so, heaven then activates the working of angels. Why? Because the angels are responding to the bidding of the word. And where's the word? It's the word of the Lord. But God can use us as those voices. When God's words are released as prophetic decrees, heaven mobilizes angels to do their work. But the directive comes from heaven. So it's important to have the words of heaven. This is so, so important. In Hebrews 1 verse 14, it says, Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? In the book of Psalms 103 verse 20, in the Perean Study Bible, it reads in verse verse 19, I'll start from verse 19, The Lord has established His throne in heaven, and His kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all His angels, mighty in strength, who carry out His word who hearken to the voice of his command. That's what they do. They hearken to the voice of his command. They carry out his words. But guess what? We are releasing God's words. They don't carry out our words. They carry out God's words. But sometimes God will use us to make decrees that are his words. Consecration is key in positioning yourself to see and hear. During an extended time of prayer recently, I suddenly saw the flag of France. I mean, here's me just praying various things I needed to pray about. And then I was led to pray for the nation of France. And then a couple of hours later, after praying into other things, I saw the flag of India. And I was led to pray for that country. And then after doing some research on these nations, I found it interesting that France has just come out of elections. And India is going into presidential elections now in mid-July, right? So I just realized that, you know what? God is interested in the destiny of nations. But guess what? He needs us to be available to pray for his agenda for these nations to manifest, to manifest in these nations. It's in heaven's interest to engage with the watchmen, but watchmen are very rare. In Ezekiel 22, verses 29 through to 31, it says, The people of the land have practiced oppression and committed robbery, and they have wronged the poor and needy, and have oppressed the sojourner without justice. 
I searched for a man among them who would build up the wall and stand in the gap before me for the land so that I would not destroy it. But I found none. I found no one. Ladies and gentlemen, there are consequences to there being no watchman, to there being no intercessor. There are consequences. Because in verse 31 it says, Thus I've poured out my indignation on them. I've consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their way I have brought upon their heads, declares the Lord God. Could it be that God wants you to stand in the gap as a watchman? Could it be that God is calling you to stand in the gap as an intercessor in order to save a nation? You know, this verse shows me that there are consequences of not having watchers. 